Hello everyone, I'm Katie and in this video I'll show you how I draw realistic fur using graphite. This footage is from a portrait of my dog Yara I did some time ago and I'll use it as a demonstration. The first thing I do is a base layer with a light hand. All I want to do is fill in the white of the paper at this stage. Since this is darker fur we're doing here, you don't want the white of the paper showing through. So, working in small circles and with a light hand, I cover up the entire area. I'm using a middle edge pencil for this. You don't want to go straight to your higher B pencils when doing dark areas, because graphite polishes to a shine. If you use your softer pencils right away, you will be limited in the amount of la layers you can do. Then, using a blending paper stamp, I blend the base layer and I start to give form to the fur. What I mean by this is, I blend in the direction the fur goes, so that when I go on top with my darker pencils, I have a guideline there to know in what direction I have to draw the fur strands. When drawing fur, and this goes for all mediums, you don't want to draw random lines going all over the place. That will not look natural and realistic. Fur, or hair, grows and flows in a certain direction. And in order to achieve a realistic look, you need to follow that direction. My best advice is to frequently look at your reference photo and draw what you see, not what you think fur looks like. Here, I'm using darker pencils in order to start giving shape to the area. I no longer work in small circles, but rather I work using small lines since I'm drawing fur. And at this stage, I want it to start looking like fur. In this specific part, the short fur of the face meets up with the long fur of the cheek, so I need to pay attention that these two areas blend right and don't end up looking like they come from two different photos that were put together. Again, pay attention to your reference photo. You can see me using my Tombow Mono Eraser to light up some of the fur strands. Graphite is very difficult to erase, especially the darker and softer LEDs, like the 8B pencil for example, but you can lift some of it in order to create highlights. If you want an area to remain pure white, you need to leave the white of the paper showing through. You can see me go through several different pencils, and that is because this is an highly detailed area, and not all details will, ha will have the same contrast. You can achieve different contrasts with the same pencil, it's just a matter of controlling how hard you press on the paper. However, I prefer to use a wide range of pencils and work with a light hand in the entire piece, because I don't like the look of graphite shine, so I try to avoid it the best I can. The more you press on the paper with the graphite pencils, the more it polishes, and it comes to a point where you can't even layer anymore, so be careful. The list of materials I use on this piece is available in the description below, in case you are interested in knowing what materials I use. For the really dark areas, I use a Stadler Mars Lumograph Black 8B pencil, which has carbon mixed in with the graphite, so unlike pure graphite which polish polishes to a shine, this pencil stays matte. You can use charcoal for the really dark areas if you want, However, charcoal does not blend very well with graphite, especially if you are pressing really hard with your graphite pencils. If you use a light hand while working, you can get two materials to blend, however, the Stadler pencil blends perfectly with graphite, so I prefer to use it. And now, it's a matter of adding detail little by little. Graphite is a slow medium, so you need to be patient when working with it. If you intend to achieve a realistic look, graphite is a medium that will take you some good hours of work to finish. However, graphite is a medium that allows you to, to find detail. With charcoal, for example, while it is a fast medium to work with, it is not ideal to achieve the level of detail that graphite can. So if you can't decide between these two mediums to work with, in my opinion, it's a matter of how you want your finished piece to look and how long you want to spend working on it. Graphite will take you a long time to finish a piece, however you can do fine details with it, and charcoal is faster to work with, but cannot achieve the same level of fine detail. 
It's all a matter of deciding what you want for a specific piece. Sometimes instead of doing a base layer with a lighter pencil, I use dirty blending stumps to do it. Dirty stumps work great to block in areas with movement, just like the fur on this cheek in here, which has strands that go in different directions. This area of the cheek is a bit challenging to do, because fur doesn't go in a single direction like the rest of the body. I know I said that fur doesn't go all over the place, however, in this specific situation, that is somewhat what happens. However, there is some order to this chaos, so to speak. Even though these strands of fur flow irregularly, you need to pay close attention into which direction it goes in, so that you don't end up doing a mess. Pay close attention to your reference photo. If the amount of detail is overwhelming to you, try to turn your piece upside down and work on it like that for a while. Sometimes doing this helps you to separate what you actually see from what your brain thinks the area should look like. Then, it's all a matter of going back and forth between my pencils and my eraser, adding darks and pulling back highlights. It is a slow process, so don't be afraid of taking your time. I go back to areas I previously worked in to adjust my contrast. This is because I avoid going too dark too soon because graphite is hard to erase, so I prefer to do my dark details just a little lighter than what they are supposed to be, and adjust them later on, when I've worked on other areas of the piece, so that everything blends in together better. Now for this area, the fur is really light, in fact, it's white, so you want to work with a really light hand and using H pencils. Since we're working on black and white here, you don't need to worry about reflecting colors, because white fur is reflective, and if this was done in colors, color pencil for example, you'd have to take that into consideration, but since this is a black and white piece, you just need to worry about contrasts. This is why I recommend starting with black and white works before you try to work with color. Once you can get contrast right, working in colors becomes easier. Most of the time younger artists don't achieve the look that they want not because their colors are wrong, but because their contrasts are off. The trick here is to not draw the fur itself, but instead draw the suggestion of fur. You don't need to draw every single strand of fur, instead you just need to draw enough so that you can recognize that it is fur. Drawing white objects, or in this case fur, can be a bit tricky at first, but it's all a matter of practice. You can see on the area of the nose the graphite shine I've been telling you about. I've used really soft and dark pencils to do those areas, and the graphite has polished to a shine, which is visible from certain angles. There is little you can do to avoid it, it's just part of the medium. However, fixative sprays can help with reducing the amount of shine you get on a finished piece. Just remember that fixatives can change the contrasts of your art piece a little bit, Sometimes it can be a good thing, because it adjusts the overall contrast of the piece. 
Just keep that in mind while you work and when you use a spray on it. And please don't use air sprays on your artwork. It's not made for that use and it can ruin your, your entire work. Remember that fur follows a set direction, and that it usually clumps together, so avoid drawing random lines all over the place. Look at your reference photo and follow the direction you see. You don't need to draw it exactly all it you see on the photo, you just need to go for close. It won't affect the realism of the piece if the fur strands aren't 100% perfectly located on a drawing. The most important thing are to have your lights light enough, your dogs dark enough, and to have your proportions right. Those are the basics for a realistic drawing or painting. The darkest pencil I use for this white part of the fur is a 2B. That's the maximum dark I'll go. Any more than that and it will be too dark for this area. At this stage I come back and forth between different areas of the piece to adjust the contrast and to add details where they are needed. You can see me using several different pencils, my tumble mono eraser and even my Durant electric eraser. That one is a bit too large to do fine detail with, for that I use the tumble one. But to arrange larger areas, I like to use my electric eraser. I also use my dirty blending stamps to draw it, since not only can they give me the perfect values I want, but also they blend as I draw with them, which speeds up the process a little bit. And here is what the finished piece looks like. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, there's another video on screen which you can watch right now. I'll see you soon.